and uh, Mike Pyle, who's here playing acoustic in the band, a uh, white-haired guy. And he didn't, he wasn't back then. But anyway, I want to tell you this story. Uh, the day finally came, cut to the chase. Mike got me set up to write with Earl Thomas Conley, my all-time hero. I didn't have a record deal. I didn't have crap going on. And, and the fact that he did that was, was crazy to me. And, and it says a lot about Earl that he gave some kid from Oklahoma a chance to write with him in his house. But, but the day finally came that I was going to write with Earl. And I, and I remember that morning. I'll never forget it. Um, I woke up, you know, a couple hours early. And I was like, man, I better think of good stuff. I'm writing with my hero today. I want to have some good lines and a hook. I, I drank like a pot of coffee, man. I was getting my brain going. So I finally left my house, and, and, and Earl lived out there by Smyrna somewhere. And uh, so by the time I left where I lived in Nashville and got out there, the pot of coffee had set in. <laughs> and man, I had to pee bad. And so I walk up to the door, and I knock on, on the door, and... and, and uh, comes to the door. Somebody came to the door and and this Earl's in there. And, and so I went in and I said, hi Earl. And I met you a couple times before. I'm Mike's friend. We're going to write today. And he's like, yeah. And I said, uh, do you have a restroom anywhere close? You know? And he's like, yeah, down the hall. And so I went down there and I shut the door and I turned around. And, and I was in such a panic that I, only at that moment that it hit me I'm in Earl Thomas Conley's house right now. <laughs> not, not in a writer's room. I'm in the man's house. And as I stood there, all I could think of was, wow, Earl Thomas Conley has sat on this tour. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, the, that's really all that story. <laughs> well, we did write my... My next, my second single that day, uh, though, which is all, called All Over Me, which is probably <laughs> has a connection to that story. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I think about Earl every day since uh, April. I think of him every single day. And it's... It's crazy, this, this business, if you're in it, it goes by so fast and you, you forget a lot of the good stuff, you know, and a lot of the little things that happened along the way. And, and uh, my first, when my first single went number one, I just, uh, I couldn't believe it, man. And, and it was the biggest day of my life. And, they, and Warner Brothers had a number one party at the building and all the industry people came and, and uh, were hanging out and it was a, they made Warner Brothers made a big deal out of it, and, and man, I looked up, and, and Earl Thomas Conley came walking into the room, and he just kind of stood in the back. He'd been golfing or something, and didn't want anybody to notice him or whatever it is. All I could, all I could see was that my hero was there, and, and I thought that's all I really remembered of, of that day until, and it's funny that this happened uh, here today. Uh, I remember something else from that day. Uh, Luke has a cake in his dressing room back there. His, his song, Knocking Boots, is number one uh, this week, and, and uh, which Earl would hated that song, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <Luke. laughs> but I, I saw that cake there, and, and Luke's, that's like 20 something number ones for, for Luke and, and and it made me remember that day that Earl came to my number one party and had to go in my dressing room and think about this for a minute because this really happened. Earl and I walked out on the, the balcony because uh, I wanted to have a chance to, to visit with him and tell him thanks and, and we kind of got away from everybody and and he was, you know, patting me on the back and you did it, you know, you did it. And, and uh, I said, yeah, Earl, but you had a you had 16 number one hits in a row. In a row. You think anybody will ever do that again? And, and getting back to how shy Earl was and not, not that conversational sometimes. He, 
he kind of just, you know, he had those eyebrows that were just, his, yeah, he kind of had that. And he goes, I, I don't know. I don't know. And that's all I remember of, of, of that day. And then I got on a pretty good, pretty good roll about, I don't know, five or six years ago. And, and I don't remember which song it was, but I had a song, believe it or not, that, that went number one. And, and, uh, and I wasn't keeping track in this way. And I got a text from uh, Earl Thomas Connolly. And he said, uh, well, you did it. And, it, and it, he wasn't much of a texter. And I, when I got the text, I thought, I wonder what he's talking about. <laughs> and then he sent one more text after that, and he said, you just need one more to pass me now. Oh. And, oh. and he remembered that conversation that had happened, you know, 15 years before that. And, uh, and I just remembered that today because of uh, Luke's crappy song at number one. <laughs> and something, something good to come out of that, Luke. So... <laughs> I'm gonna try this, and, and, and by the way, uh, this, 